Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am your host, Data T, and this is my channel, The Good Guys. Guys, today's story uh, comes from The Trace, okay? And it talks about something that is going on currently in Atlanta called Cop City. Okay, I have covered this a l briefly, but today I'd like to get into the meat of it. And my overall answer to this uh, is you cannot depend on the police to protect you. And I do not believe in some of these programs that help to stem the violence in these crime infested cities i think there are certain things that need to happen and i will cover that in in this entirety of me reading this article but before i do that guys if you guys wouldn't mind leaving a like subscribe leaving a comment remember we are still on the road to a thousand subscribers and i can only get there we can only get there with your help so you can also hit me on minds on twitter and even on truth social and uh, there are other places there that i have branched out and put some things on tiktok uh pretty soon instagram but uh let us dive into this story because i find it interesting so let's begin if we start here it says here public health as cop city moves forward anti-violence activists see broken promises okay atlanta was expected to invest five million in violence intervention programs but organizers say those commitments have fallen short even as investment in a controversial police training center has nearly doubled guys i will say what is actually happening here okay and you will see in this uh somewhat of a town hall or public display where residents come to complain or voice their opinions they are building an a huge training center um that's about 85 acres uh for police and the residents from the most part looks like they do not agree with it we'll get into it it's going to be at the bottom um but I thought I'd just let you guys know, okay? So here it is. In December 2021, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms sent a new release announcing the formation of the city's first ever Office of Violence Reduction, okay? Let's open that, let's see what that says. Okay, so here is the press release here saying what the violence reduction and violence prevention program uh, is supposed to do and they talk about here what are some things that are supposed to happen okay the office was to be charged with coordinating efforts between community-led violence intervention programs and dispersing some five million in grants to organizations approaching gun violence as a public health problem community activists in atlanta met the news with hesitation questioning whether the office would have the same financial and social support as another proposed initiative at the time. The city's mammoth $30 million investment in Cop City, an 85-acre police training facility, which many said solidified its commitment to a large enforcement-centric approach to public safety. Let me stop there. I do believe police is needed to keep the the order guys um you know if you're if you do not feel safe in a community how can you conduct business you can't okay so i do believe that police in some areas especially the, the worst areas they need to flood that area they have to flood that area of police make sure that every corner is safe and then that way people will see that commitment and then come to the city and invest and when they invest they bring jobs and then people can 
be hired and 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 have a stable way of living if people don't see that you cannot get out of of crime poverty will persist okay if no one sees an upside no one sees the sun they will remain in darkness all right it says here two years on any hope among the activists that atlanta was ready to invest in community-based solutions has all been evaporated okay the office of violence reduction has been left with a without a director for months so nobody is even in that office and has failed to launch its first initiative a city-led community violence prevention program meanwhile the city has more than doubled its pledge to capacity rising to a staggering 67 million so from 30 million to 67 million that is a lot of money okay yeah that is that is a lot okay okay in deciding where leaders priorities lie it is important to not necessarily follow what they say but follow how they spend i agree said dr thaddeus johnson a former police captain and professor at georgia state university who studies criminology and criminal justice like many u.s cities atlanta experienced a significant spike in shootings during the pandemic in 2020 police investigated 157 homicides let's look at that what does that say? Atlanta, deadliest year in decades, has city on edge and demanding change. 2020, 58% rise. Well, we it's not just them. Okay, it is not just them. It says here, it's ridiculous that now, even during the pandemic, we got more gun violence going on than ever before, said Columbus Ward, a longtime activist who lives in Atlanta's people's neighborhood. The year's violence claimed several victims in this community, including Deborah Houston, 59, shot outside a convenience store on Atlanta Avenue in October, and Manville Bucker, 49, shot on Marvin Martin Street in December. <sighs> they are not the only ones. There are 20 other states that went to this that went through this same nonsense. Okay, um, it says here. As shootings increased, there were concerns about safety throughout the city, obviously, specifically in more affluent neighborhoods like Buckhead, which for years has tried to secede from Atlanta, citing crime fears. Now, guys, I have covered that. Um, Buckhead, uh, got to make some money to live there, but they are always trying to leave or secede from Atlanta. And sometimes I think to myself, is it good that if a city breaks up from a county or a state is that a good thing or even if a parts of of one state wants to go to another state um i think people have the right and the ability to do this okay um if we look at this okay they have they're they are very serious about doing this okay they've submitted bills to do this they really do want to uh secede from the city and their chief reason is crime now who else wants to do that as well there is a state called portland or i'm sorry maybe that's the city or this or the capital or whatever there's a state called oregon okay and in oregon this was a state during that time had a hundred days of riots and if you don't believe me i want you to look at the pictures here i will put this in the description but guys a hundred days of riot look at this this is supposed to be a vigil and they got cars burning in the background okay look at this okay smoke we got uh, a lady in the nude there okay you got uh look at this look at all this okay i may use this as a thumbnail okay look at this okay there were days of riots and just so we're cure, clear i know this shows just pictures of it okay but are we really 
clear that there were a hundred days of riots uh let's confirm that and we can do that by going to abc news portland police declare riot on 100th day straight night of protest as fire berms hur hurled at officers okay guys so if we look at oregon the state of oregon i want you to know this okay check this out there is okay 14 different counties in oregon that want to secede and go to the state of idaho so i can understand if buckhead from atlanta wants to secede from the state or secede from the city whatever okay they want to be kept separate they don't want to be a part of that nonsense and i completely understand look at this move oregon's border they want to move from they do not want to be associated with oregon a state that had a hundred days of riots that is insane so i completely understand why buckhead wants to do this okay let's move on it says here, then Mayor Bottoms responded to the influx in violence with a litany of police and funding approvals or proposals. Her office gave the Atlanta Police Department a bonus of $500 per officer. Guys, uh, I wonder if this is just a one-time payment or if this $500 is per paycheck. Maybe I should have looked that up, but if we're looking at $500, per officer it was just a one time that's nothing i would have given i would have given it back hey how about you uh do something for uh some of these people that have dealt with crime give that to them now even if it comes out to 500 dollars uh let's say maybe once a month that's almost six thousand dollars maybe it is every paycheck so maybe if you're getting bi-weekly you're looking at what twelve thousand dollars that might not be too bad okay but guys we are already seeing and we already saw during that time the infamous defund the police uh movement okay do i need to look it up it is infamous okay it was a movement guys it was a movement okay there is no question okay no question okay that there was anti-police settlement abolish the police okay it, it 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 was it was very clear all right um but is that enough an extra twelve thousand for the year i i think people would say and i think police officers probably said in the end no matter how much you pay me for this job i'm not going to do it and that's why so many of them left the force we had a record number of police retiring um it was just insane okay once you take that genie out of the bottle you can't put it back okay in July 2021, Bottoms established an anti-violence advisory council. Okay, another piece of legislation. Okay, and what did that do? It says here, charged with implementing immediate and long-term actions to address the current wave of violence. The council proposed the Office of Violence Reduction, a city office whose goals were centered around more community-oriented solutions to violence prevention, including coordination, non-enforcement violence reduction efforts, across the city guys i wonder what exactly uh was proposed here let's let's take a look uh it says here the anti-violence advisory council recommendations include creating of the mayor's office of violence reduction which is vacant nobody is there launching continuation or expansion of nine critical initiatives 
focused on locations and individuals most impacted by violence. Okay, I'd like to know those nine things. Investing $70 million to fund the nine critical initiatives. So that $70 million is Cop City. All right, let's see. The nine critical initiatives for violence reduction. Guys, it says it here. Okay, let's see. Public awareness. Okay. Community capacity and infrastructure building. Expansion of programs focused on violence prevention. Local security planning. Focus on violent repeat, repeat offenders. That's a good one. Increased enforcement of nuance, nuisance properties. Hiring 250 additional officers. Expanding the city's Operation Shield camera network by 250 cameras this year and completing the One Atlanta Light Up the Night program to install 10,000 new street lights in violence areas by December. I think some of this is not bad, but you are not targeting, I think, what is going to help the city of Atlanta uh you know in the biggest way and that's the people you have to give the people the mandate meaning tell these people hey go get a gun does it stop there no it doesn't go get a gun if you're a business put a firearm tell them in your in the window hey this place is protected by guns we are armed here we have cameras here you will be prosecuted here let these criminals know take an active stance in protecting your community i hope the people of atlanta this city okay they actually will do that but who knows <sighs> the goals, however, remain largely unfulfilled. I wonder why. In March, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reported that the Office of Violence Reduction had failed to meet many of the initiatives it had laid out, especially concerning violence prevention programs. For the most part, guys, I don't think they even work. Do they? As crime rose, Atlanta failed to spend millions earmarked for violence prevention. I wonder why. It says here, the office didn't launch its proposed city-led violence interruption program that was initially planned for 2022, and the five million that was allocated for community violence solution has not been spent in full. About two million remains. So even after spending $3 million, have they seen any reduction? I mean, do people, do they means test this stuff? Do they say, hey, show me the progress so far? Even after a million dollars. The office first director, Jaquel, Jaquel, oh boy, Jack, oh, whatever, Clemens Moore stepped down only after 11 months in the role. So she left. Clemens Moore did not respond to requests for comment. So she didn't even leave a reason why. She just said, nope, it's not for me. I'm out. Can't blame her. Some cities residents said they were not surprised that the Office of Violence Reduction efforts have stalled because it follows the city's leadership pattern focusing on policing instead of programs aimed at reducing violence. If those programs focused on the people, then I wouldn't have a problem, but you gotta do both. There has to be a focus on policing. There has to be uh, a, a, a focus on programs but those programs need to come from the people. Um, some of these community organizers, I, I, I really wonder, are they really serving the community? It says here, I am not surprised because it follows a long string of broken promises or actions that they take in order to get the headlines that they then later back off, said Micah. Hurstkind, a stop city organizer and writer based in Atlanta. There is often no follow through with these programs. The main area they follow through 
though upon is when they give money to the police okay critics of the city's enormous investment in policing also noted that several other proposals by the mayor's anti-violence council rolled out alongside the office of violence reduction centered on funding efforts by the atlanta police department those proposals included the hiring of 250 additional officers and installing 250 street cameras the office of violence reduction is a pretty explicit example that politicians are good at using language there is a whole lot of language about holistic approaches including violence prevention but a majority of that funding was going to the police anyway said dr mark spencer an internal medicine physician in the city who is an advocate for non-policing alternatives to violence prevention are people in leadership really committed to a holistic vision of police safety if the vast majority of that vision and funding is still within the police guys what the f what is holistic mean okay holistic i have no idea what this means holistic i'm gonna have to google this term i don't know what that means let me see something okay meaning it says here characterized by the belief that the parts of something are interconnected and can be explained only by reference to the whole the solution demands a holistic approach and a strategic vision of what can be achieved. So this is meaning that in order to solve the crime, everything is connected and we have to focus on everything. In some ways, maybe I can understand that if you bring in the 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 rampant single motherhood the rampant parts of crime and how in a particular culture the black culture it is a huge uh i would say staple meaning um it's almost a given that majority of the black community is going to be committing majority of the crimes if that means tackling all that at one time to get a solution, maybe that's not too bad. If they're going to actually put that in the decision making and say, you know what? This is a problem in black culture, but I don't think they ever recognize it. I don't. I don't think they ever do. I think they are always too worried about illegal guns, ghost guns, uh, what's this term they use assault weapons which is bullshit okay i think that is part of their holistic approach and it doesn't even need to be there because it does nothing no wonder this stuff is failing it says here major andre dickens okay mayor andre dickens office did not respond to multiple requests to speak about the office of violence reduction of course not while efforts to fund community violence prevention have lagged the city's support of policing has increased signaled most significantly by the city's commitment to top to cop city last month the city council voted to approve 67 million dollars okay for the construction of training facility despite 12 hours of public comment guys i'm going to show you the youtube video of these guys uh, uh at this um <clears throat> council apparently it has been more than one with this gentleman here he's going to talk about it uh stand by imagine people working here with their bare hands for millennia in this land this is the land you are all in this is what has authority, the land and the people of the land that have built a relationship that is sacred with this land. You are sitting there. This is the third time we come here to tell you they don't want, we don't want Cup City. And people have come from everywhere. We have uh, disabled people. We have young, old people. We have all kinds of people coming here and showing this amazing show of civility. And you don't listen. This is the third time you are sitting here pretending to be all important when you are just higher. You are in these little chairs with this food that you are sitting us and pretending to hear us. But we are not gonna back down. 
and the world is listening now. I'm calling on everybody that has conscience in Atlanta and beyond. I'm calling on the queer community to be in the looked out and to be in River Air because we, if this facility is built, queer, trans people, black people, indigenous people are going to be killed. And that this blood, just like Dr. Guetta's blood, is going to be in each of your hands. And it's a shame on you. You have kids, you have family. And you are, do, you are just doing business as, as usual. You are just performing. This is just ridiculous. I come from Mexico and I thought this country is going to respect free speech. This is a fascist country, what I'm seeing. This is worse than third country. You are worse than third country. You have not done your job. So I don't know what you think about yourself, but we know that you are just servants of the people. The real power is outside here. It's in these people. Man, you. And I urge you to bail note and to look in your conscience and to respect black and indigenous people and their blood and their tears and their sweat in this land. Land is have authority, not any of you. So do your fucking job and say no to Cop City. Well, um, you have it there. Uh, it looks like the people are not in favor of Cop City. Okay. So let me move on. It says here, the vote means that the city will initially invest. Or well, actually, before I did that, it says here, despite 12 hours of public comment from cities, residents who were overwhelmingly opposed to the project. So they do not agree with it. The city of Atlanta, they do not want it. The vote means that the city will initially invest 30 million from its general fund, along with another 1 million toward the building of a gym. An additional 36 million will come from a leasing agreement with the police foundation over the next 30 years. The 85 acre facility located on the old site of the old prison farm, a defunct former prison that was operated by the state of Georgia throughout the 20th century. It will contain an auditorium, a burn tower, new shooting ranges, space to practice high speed chases, and a mock city for ermine police training. The project has sparked numerous protests with opponents arguing the development of the site, which is prone to flooding and its largest area left of the city's green space will harm the environment while propagating the militarization of the police. Uh, you know what? I think I have something to say about this. Okay, here is the history there of this particular area. Okay, um, it's been around for a while. All right, and this says it has sparked numerous protests. People have protested Cop City. We know that people do not want it. Okay, now here is my take on this. In my position, okay. If we look at Cop City, it could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. I think the good thing about this, in my opinion, okay, is one, it does give the police a place to train. Police always need more training. They always do. I believe they need a lot more. Um, uh, I would say examples or maybe uh training in de-escalation no problem i'm on board with that but i think also they need a whole lot of training where they're in different positions how many police officers can shoot from the stairs or or clear a building which is i'm, I'm i think they do but do they do it on a regular basis shooting from a car you know these are so many different situations that you can be in and you have to expose these police officers to it so they are trained so they know how to 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 uh, to react 
in those situations. I mean, they have mock buildings here. I mean, off. I, I hope they even train them on how to breach a school if there's a school shooter or anything like that. So I'm not too opposed to this if even if they open it up to the public. How about we let some civilians train here? How about in this 85 acre uh, facility, how about they let an airsoft uh, game go off? Maybe every couple months, every quarter. Okay, I think airsoft is huge in terms of training, in terms of uh, uh, having real world environments where you are actually shooting, maybe force on force, a whole different, a whole uh, a bunch of of scenarios can go on i think in aerosoft that would that would help training of just not just police officers but also that of civilians i would love them to open this up to the public why not have uh people the 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 vast majority of citizens train here of atlanta i i would i would say why not open it up to them? I think it would be a good thing if they were going to spend the tax dollars for that. But who knows? I wonder if anybody has ever made this suggestion. Okay. It says here, even some advocates of policing who don't believe that the facility will militarize the department have suggested that money could be spent elsewhere. Like improving law enforcement vehicles or higher wages. I'm in agreement with that. Anti-violence advocates, meanwhile, continue to point to something they believe is even more critical, that the funding going to the training facility is taking resources away from programs that have long been under-supported. Initiatives that address what many, including council member Keisha Sean Whites, describes as the root cause of crime, income insecurity housing instability and lack of health care are often eclipsed in the city's budget by law enforcement expenses the city's proposed physical year budget for 2023 its largest in history includes 247 million for spending directly tied to law enforcement it's a lot of money folks i i just i just wonder how much of that is spent on the people and what we do know is that these guys have broken off five million of that money to give to these so-called violence intervention programs i'd like to lead a program uh <clears throat> i call it the let's spend a day to go get a gun okay let's spend a day to go get a gun Let's spend another day to just dry fire in our house how to bring from the holster, present on a target, put it back in your holster. All these small, small things to communities, even gun safety. Maybe we can hire Black Guns Matter to come and teach uh, uh, firearm safety. Why not that? I hope some money goes to them. Hey, you guys need to come down here why not i wouldn't mind that i think that'd be a good idea anyway atlanta's lack of robust city supported violence prevention infrastructure is what in part influenced vulcan Tapali. now guys i have done a story on this man okay he actually was the um he's a criminologist uh he's a teacher i think a professor and he even uh was in a shooting uh he got grazed in a i think a shootout and uh, he's got a a scar to prove it um there are some things that he said that i like but on the majority i think i don't agree with this man okay he has uh said that we should think about <laughs> we should think about what what leads up to a person who who is committing these crimes you know i would say in the aftermath 
yes. But on the immediate effect, no. We're not. I'm not worried about these jokers who start to shoot and try to pillage and steal and and commit acts of violence. No, man. I'm not going to think, oh, well, let's think about his past. Fuck that. I'm not worried about that. We need to do... The first thing we need to do is put these jokers in prison. Put these jokers in a, a an area where they are humiliated, that they understand that what they did was wrong, and 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 punish these people. Okay? That's what needs to happen. First, then we can talk about oh your your whoever wasn't there for you. Okay? Oh please. Alright? Anyway. So that program, funded by Grady Memorial Hospital and a grant from DeKalb County, wasn't one of the programs funded by the Office of Violence Reduction. We have spent so much time and effort on the brute force approaches. It is time to think about more community-based programs. Tapali said, we just haven't had those types of investments to see if they can do things we think that they can do. So he was talking about that the money wasn't there. I'm going to tell you guys. If part of your solution does not focus on the general public, informing them, there's there's not going to be a change. If I went to this town hall meeting, you know what I would say to them? I would say how many of the people I would actually talk to the not even to the council members. I, we know they're not listening. I would talk to the I would take the time to talk to the the public. I'd go behind the podium, turn it the other way around, and talk to them, and tell them, I need you all to understand something. You have to be your first responder. You cannot rely on the police. The Supreme Court has already ruled in this, already. Police officers do not have a duty to protect you. So why do you depend on them? To restore order where are people in the community to say you know what i'm going to put a sign in my window i'm going to have my personnel my employees trained on how to use a gun if i don't want to do that i will hire an armed security guard i will make sure that my business that my where i live i have a gun i i will get training i will make sure that i know how to use it and I may not advertise it for my home, but I will definitely advertise it for my place of business. I will put cameras there. I'll, yeah, I'll put cameras in my home as well. And tell maybe you put a sign in there. Hey, boss man, don't try it. Okay? All kinds of things can deter crime. But it starts with the individual. It starts with the people living in that community. They have to be in that planning there needs to be money there it has to start there if it doesn't all this shit that they want to do programs upon programs upon programs is not going to work it must start with the people the group okay the militia the militia is the people guys Maybe I've gone on a little too long, but I did want to highlight this, okay? Uh, you know, and this goes for almost every other community that is relying on the police. The, this group of people, they actually don't want Cop City. Um, but are those programs actually doing anything? And in my opinion, they are not doing shit. And they should not rely on uh, the police and even these programs if they do not focus on the people so i say this at the end of my videos and i mean it and uh, i believe it's the truth good people have guns let it start there good people should always have guns if evil is going to have a chance it's only when good men do nothing. So good people should have multiple guns. They should be armed to the teeth. 
because if good guys if good men do nothing there will be no good guys